The Ghaznavid dynasty Persian, Ghaznavian, was a Persianate Muslim dynasty of Turkic Mamluk origin, at their greatest extent ruling large parts of Iran, Afghanistan, much of Transoxiana and the northwest Indian subcontinent from 977 to 1186. The dynasty was founded by Sabuktagan upon his succession to rule of the region of Ghazna after the death of his father-in-law, Alp Tigan, who was a breakaway ex-general of the Samanid Empire from Balkh, north of the Hindu Kush in Greater Khorasan. Although the dynasty was of Central Asian Turkic origin, it was thoroughly Persianized in terms of language, culture, literature and habits and hence is regarded by some as a Persian dynasty. Sabuktagan's son, Mahmud of Ghazni, declared independence from the Samanid Empire and expanded the Ghaznavid Empire to the Amu Darya, the Indus River and the Indian Ocean in the east and to Ray and Hamadan in the west. Under the reign of Masud I, the Ghaznavid dynasty began losing control over its western territories to the Seljuk dynasty after the Battle of Dandanakan, resulting in a restriction of its holdings to modern-day Afghanistan, Pakistan, Punjab and Baluchistan. In 1151, Sultan Bahram Shah lost Ghazni to the Ghurid king Allah al-Din Husayn. <inaudible> Rise to power Two military families arose from the Turkic slave guards of the Samanid Empire, the Simjurids and Ghaznavids, who ultimately proved disastrous to the Samanids. The Simjurids received an appanage in the Kohistan region of eastern Khorasan. The Samanid generals Alp Tigan and Abu al Hasan Simjuri competed for the governorship of Khorasan and control of the Samanid Empire by placing on the throne emirs they could dominate after the death of Abd al Malik I in 961. His death created a succession crisis between his brothers. A court party instigated by men of the scribal class civilian ministers rather than Turkic generals rejected the candidacy of Alp Tigan for the Samanid throne. Mansur I was installed instead, and Alp Tigan prudently retired to south of the Hindu Kush, where he captured Ghazna and became the ruler of the city as a Samanid authority. The Simjurids enjoyed control of Khorasan south of the Amu Darya but were hard pressed by a third great Iranian dynasty, the Bayad dynasty, and were unable to survive the collapse of the Samanids and the subsequent rise of the Ghaznavids. The struggles of the Turkic slave generals for mastery of the throne with the help of shifting allegiance from the court's ministerial leaders both demonstrated and accelerated the Samanid decline. Samanid weakness attracted into Transoxiana the Karluks, a Turkic people who had recently converted to Islam. They occupied Bukhara in 992, establishing in Transoxania the Kara Khanid Khanate. After Alp Tigan's death in 963, Abu Ishaq Ibrahim, followed by his slave Sabuktagan, took the throne. Sabuktagan's son Mahmud of Ghazni made an agreement with the Kara Khanid Khanate whereby the Amu Darya was recognized as their mutual boundary. <laughs> Domination Topic. Sabuktagan Sabuktagan, son-in-law of Alp Tigan and founder of the Ghaznavid Empire, began expanding it by capturing Samanid and Kabul Shahi territories, including most of what is now Afghanistan and part of Pakistan. The 16th-century Persian historian, Farishta, records Sabuktagan's genealogy as descended from the Sasanian emperors. Subuktu Gin, the son of Jukan, the son of Kuzal Hukam, the son of Kuzal Arslan, the son of Firuz, the son of Yezdijerd, king of Persia. However, modern historians believe this was an attempt to connect himself with the history of Old Persia. After the death of Sabuktagan, his son Ismail claimed the throne for a temporary period, but he was defeated and captured by Mahmud in 998 at the Battle of Ghazni. Mahmud son of Sabuktagan In 997, Mahmud, another son of Sabuktagan, succeeded the throne, and Ghazni and the Ghaznavid dynasty have become perpetually associated with him. He completed the conquest of the Samanid and Shahi territories, including the Ismaili kingdom of Multan, Sindh, as well as some Buwayhid territory. By all accounts, the rule of Mahmud was the golden age and height of the Ghaznavid empire. Mahmud carried out 17 expeditions through northern India to establish his control and set up tributary states, and his raids also resulted in the looting of a great deal of plunder. He established his authority from the borders of Ray to Samarkand, from the Caspian Sea to the Yamuna. 
During Mahmud's reign the Ghaznavids settled 4,000 Turkmen families near Farana in Khorasan. By 1027, due to the Turkmen raiding neighboring settlements, the governor of Tus, Abu Lalarith Arslan Jadib, led military strikes against them. The Turkmen were defeated and scattered to neighboring lands. Although, as late as 1033, Ghaznavid governor Tash Farish executed 50 Turkmen chiefs for raids into Khorasan, the wealth brought back from the Mahmud's Indian expeditions to Ghazni was enormous, and contemporary historians e Abalfazal Behagi, Ferdowsi give glowing descriptions of the magnificence of the capital and of the conqueror's munificent support of literature. Mahmud died in 1030. Decline Twin sons of Mahmud Mahmud left the empire to his son Muhammad, who was mild, affectionate and soft. His brother, Masud, asked for three provinces that he had won by his sword, but his brother did not consent. Masud had to fight his brother, and he became king, blinding and imprisoning Muhammad as punishment. Masud was unable to preserve the empire and following a disastrous defeat at the Battle of Dandanakan in 1040, he lost all the Ghaznavid lands in Iran and Central Asia to the Seljuks, plunging the realm into a time of troubles. His last act was to collect all his treasures from his forts in hope of assembling an army and ruling from India, but his own forces plundered the wealth and he proclaimed his blind brother as king again. The two brothers now exchanged positions. Muhammad was elevated from prison to the throne, while Masud was consigned to a dungeon after a reign of ten years and was assassinated in 1040. Masud's son, Madud, was governor of Balkh, and in 1040, after hearing of his father's death, he came to Ghazni to claim his kingdom. He fought with the sons of the blind Muhammad and was victorious. However, the empire soon disintegrated and most kings did not submit to Madud. In a span of nine years, four more kings claimed the throne of Ghazni. Ibrahim <inaudible> In 1058, Masud's son Ibrahim, a great calligrapher who wrote the Quran with his own pen, became king. Ibrahim re-established a truncated empire on a firmer basis by arriving at a peace agreement with the Seljuks and a restoration of cultural and political linkages. Under Ibrahim and his successors the empire enjoyed a period of sustained tranquility. Shorn of its western land, it was increasingly sustained by riches accrued from raids across northern India, where it faced stiff resistance from Indian rulers such as the Paramara of Malwa and the Gahadvala of Kannauj. He ruled until 1098. Masood <laughs> Masud III became king for 16 years, with no major event in his lifetime. Signs of weakness in the state became apparent when he died in 1115, with internal strife between his sons ending with the ascension of Sultan Bahram Shah as a Seljuk vassal. Bahram Shah defeated his brother Arslan for the throne at the Battle of Ghazni in 1117. <laughs> Sultan Bahram Shah Sultan Bahram Shah was the last Ghaznavid king, ruling Ghazni, the first and main Ghaznavid capital, for 35 years. In 1148 he was defeated in Ghazni by Saif al-Din Suri, but he recaptured the capital the next year. Allah al-Din Husayn, a Ghorid king, conquered the city in 1151, for the revenge of his brother Qutubuddin's death, who was son-in-law of the king but was publicly punished and killed for a minor offence. Allah al-Din Husayn then razed the city and burned it for seven days, after which he became known as Jahanzu's world burner. Ghazni was restored to the Ghaznavids by the intervention of the Seljuks, who came to the aid of Bahram. Ghaznavid struggles with the Ghurids continued in subsequent years as they nibbled away at Ghaznavid territory, and Ghazni and Zabulistan was lost to a group of Oghuz Turks before captured by the Ghurids. Ghaznavid power in northwestern India continued until the Ghurid conquest of Lahore from Khusrau Malik in 1186. Military and tactics The core of the Ghaznavid army was primarily made up of Turks, as well as thousands of native Afghans who were trained and assembled from the area south of the Hindu Kush in what is now Afghanistan. During the rule of Sultan Mahmud, a new, larger military training center was established in Bost now Lashka Gah. 
This area was known for blacksmiths where war weapons were made. After capturing and conquering the Punjab region, the Ghaznavids began to employ Hindus in their army. Like the other dynasties that rose out of the remains of the Abbasid Caliphate, the Ghaznavid administrative traditions and military practice came from the Abbasids. The Arabian horses, at least in the earliest campaign, were still substantial in Ghaznavid military incursions, especially in dashing raids deep into hostile territory. As evidenced there is a record about 6,000 Arab horse were sent against King Anandapala in 1008 AD and the existence of this Arabian cavalry persist until 1118 under Ghaznavid governor in Lahore. There were, however, unique changes adopted that met the demands of the geographic situation of the Ghaznavid dynasty. Due to their access to the Indus Ganges plains, the Ghaznavids, during the 11th and 12th centuries, developed the first Muslim army to use war elephants in battle. The elephants were protected by armor plating on their fronts. The use of these elephants in other regions that the Ghaznavids fought in, particularly in Central Asia, to which the elephant was a foreign weapon. Topic: <laughs> State and Culture. According to Clifford Edmund Bosworth, the Ghaznavid sultans were ethnically Turkish, but the sources, all in Arabic or Persian, do not allow us to estimate the persistence of Turkish practices and ways of thought amongst them. Yet given the fact that the essential basis of the Ghaznavids' military support always remained their Turkish soldiery, there must always have been a need to stay attuned to their troops' needs and aspirations. Also, there are indications of the persistence of some Turkish literary culture under the early Ghaznavids Kaprilezid, pp. 56-57. The sources do make it clear, however, that the Sultan's exercise of political power and the administrative apparatus which gave it shape came very speedily to be within the Perso-Islamic tradition of statecraft and monarchical rule, with the ruler as a distant figure, buttressed by divine favor, ruling over a mass of traders, artisans, peasants, etc., whose prime duty was obedience in all respects but above all in the payment of taxes. The fact that the personnel of the bureaucracy which directed the day-to-day -day running of the state, and which raised the revenue to support the sultan's lifestyle and to finance the professional army, were Persians who carried on the administrative traditions of the Samanids, only strengthened this conception of secular power. Persianization of the state apparatus was accompanied by the Persianization of high culture at the Ghaznavid court. The level of literary creativity was just as high under Ibrahim and his successors up to Baramsa, with such poets as Abul Faraj Rooney, San, Atman Mokhtari, Mas ud e sa d e Salman, and Sayyid Hassan Ghaznavi. Ripka, Hist. Iran. Lit. pp. 196 97, Bosworth, later Ghaznavids, pp. 75 77, 107 10. We know from the biographical dictionaries of poets Tadkara that the court in Lahore of Khosrau Malek had an array of fine poets, none of whose divans has unfortunately survived, and the translator into elegant Persian prose of Ebn Makafa S. Khalila wa Demna, namely Abul Ma Ali Nasser Allah b. Muhammad, served the Sultan for a while as his chief secretary Bosworth, later Ghaznavids, pp. 127-28. The Ghaznavids thus present the phenomenon of a dynasty of Turkish slave origin which became culturally Persianized to a perceptibly higher degree than other contemporary dynasties of Turkish origin such as Saljuks and Karakhanids. Persian literary culture enjoyed a renaissance under the Ghaznavids during the 11th century. The Ghaznavid court was so renowned for its support of Persian literature that the poet Faraki travelled from his home province to work for them. The poet Unsari's short collection of poetry was dedicated to Sultan Mahmud and his brothers Nasser and Yaqub. Another poet of the Ghaznavid court, Manacheri, wrote numerous poems to the merits and advantages of drinking wine. Sultan Mahmud, modeling the Samanid Bukhara as a cultural center, made Ghazni into a center of learning, inviting Ferdowsi and al Biruni. He even attempted to persuade Avicenna, but was refused. Mahmud preferred that his fame and glory be publicized in Persian and hundreds of poets assembled at his court. He brought whole libraries from Rayy and Isfahan to Ghazni and even demanded that the Khwarimshah court send its men of learning to Ghazni. Due to his invasion of Rayy and Isfahan, Persian literary production was inaugurated in Azerbaijan and Iraq. The Ghaznavids continued to develop historical writing in Persian that had been initiated by their predecessors, the Samanid Empire. 
The historian Abul Fadl Bayhaqi's Tariq e Bayhaqi, written in the latter half of the 11th century, is an example. Although the Ghaznavids were of Turkic origin and their military leaders were generally of the same stock, as a result of the original involvement of Sebuktagan and Mahmud of Ghazni in Samanid affairs and in the Samanid cultural environment, the dynasty became thoroughly Persianized, so that in practice one cannot consider their rule over Iran one of foreign domination. They also copied their administrative system from the Samanids. In terms of cultural championship and the support of Persian poets, they were more Persian than their ethnically Iranian rivals, the Bayad dynasty, whose support of Arabic letters in preference to Persian is well known. Historian Bosworth explains, In fact, with the adoption of Persian administrative and cultural ways, the Ghaznavids threw off their original Turkish steppe background and became largely integrated with the Perso Islamic tradition. As a result, Ghazni developed into a great center of Arabic learning. With Sultan Mahmud's invasions of North India, Persian culture was established at Lahore, which later produced the famous poet, Masood Saad Salman. Lahore, under the Ghaznavid rule in the 11th century, attracted Persian scholars from Khorasan, India, and Central Asia and became a major Persian cultural center. It was also during Mahmud's reign that Ghaznavid coinage began to have bilingual legends consisting of Arabic and Devanagari script. The Persian culture, established by the Ghaznavids in Ghazna and eastern Afghanistan, survived the Gurid invasion in the 12th century and endured until the invasion of the Mongols. Topic: <laughs> Legacy. At its height, the Ghaznavid Empire grew to cover large parts of present-day Iran, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan, all of Afghanistan, Pakistan and large parts of northwest India. The Ghaznavid rulers are generally credited with spreading Islam into the Indian subcontinent. In addition to the wealth accumulated through raiding Indian cities, and exacting tribute from Indian Rajas, the Ghaznavids also benefited from their position as an intermediary along the trade routes between China and the Mediterranean. They were, however, unable to hold power for long and by 1040 the Seljuks had taken over their Persian domains and a century later the Ghurids took over their remaining sub-continental lands. The Nashur Khans, are said to be the descendants of the Ghaznavid dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> List of rulers <laughs> <laughs> Family tree of the Ghaznavid sultans See also List of battles involving the Ghaznavid Empire History of Afghanistan List of Sunni Muslim dynasties Footnotes Further reading Bosworth, Clifford Edmund 1963, The Ghaznavids, Their Empire in Afghanistan and Eastern Iran 994-1040 Edinburgh University Press, Edinburgh, OCLC 3601436 Bosworth, Clifford Edmund 1977, The Later Ghaznavids, Splendor and Decay, The Dynasty in Afghanistan and Northern India 1040-1186 Columbia University Press, New York, ISBN 0 231-04428-3 Bosworth, Clifford Edmund 1998. The Ghaznavids. In Asimov, M.S., Bosworth, C.E., History of Civilizations of Central Asia PDF, UNESCO Publishing, ISBN 978-92-3-103467-1 M. Ismail Merchinkovsky 2003 Persian Historiography and Geography, Bertold Spuler on Major Works Produced in Iran, The Caucasus, Central Asia, India and Early Ottoman Turkey Pustaka Nasional, Singapore, ISBN 9971-77-488-7 External links Coins of Ghaznavid rulers Mahmud of Ghazna Columbia Encyclopedia 6th edition Mahmud Encyclopedia Britannica online edition Ghaznavid Dynasty Encyclopedia Britannica online edition Ghaznavids and Ghurids Encyclopedia Britannica online edition Mahmud Ghaznavi's 17 invasions of India The history of India as told by its own historians 
The Mohammedan Period by Sir H. M. Eliot, edited by John Dowson, London Trubner Company 1867–1877 Eliot, Sir H. M., edited by Dowson, John. The History of India, as told by its own historians. The Mohammedan Period published by London Trubner Company 1867–1877, online copy, online version posted by, the Packard Humanities Institute, Persian Texts in Translation, Afghan Secrets Revealed on Google Earth Ethe, Carl Herman 1911. Persia. In Chisholm, Hugh. Encyclopædia Britannica. 21 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. pp. 187-252.